Okay guys, so today we're going to be talking about creating a Linux VM on Proxmox, more specifically a Kali Linux VM. I'm going to be using Kali Linux and PyroDRS a lot for my upcoming exams, which I'm going to talk about next week. Next week I have a video coming out um, that highlights some of the certificates that I want to take before the end of this year. But I figure I'd make a video about it for those of you guys that are trying to set up uh, a Linux VM on your Proxmox hypervisor more specifically a Kali Linux VM and for those of you guys that don't know how to set up um, your Proxmox server I'll put a link in, in somewhere here so you guys can take a look at it um, the video is divided into several parts so if you want to jump to a specific part you can check the menu in the description and then jump to whatever part you want to jump to if that makes your life easier if you're new here, my name is Paul. This channel is about learning. It's about breaking stuff. It's about fixing stuff. It's about failing and figuring out why we fail. So if you're new here and you like this kind of things, you like tech, you like seeing someone fail and then trying to figure out how to fail, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first part, this is part one. We're going to download Kali Linux. We are going to run the checksum to check and make sure the ISO is legitimate. And then we are going to upload that ISO to our uh, Proxmox hypervisor. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to kalilinux.org or kali.org, not kalilinux.org, I'm sorry. Kali.org, this is the website here. If you go to Google and type in Kali Linux, or just Kali, you should be able to see this website and make sure, just make sure you go into the right website as well. So for those of you guys that don't know what Kali Linux is, Kali Linux is a Linux distro that is much more geared towards uh, penetration testing, towards ethical hacking, that kind of thing, because it takes all of the tools that you need for ethical hacking, all of the, the equipments and, and necessary things that you need for ethical hacking, it takes all of it and put it into one um, OS in one distro. Now you can create, you don't necessarily need Kali Linux. You can go ahead and say, I'm just going to download a Linux or, uh, OS, or whatever Linux OS you want. It can be Ubuntu and then just kind of download each and every one of these tools uh, that you need. So if you're scrolling down here, for example, it tells you some of the tools like Hydra, John the Reaper, um, Bob Sweet and all that stuff. You can go ahead and download individually uh, and then just kind of create your own uh, uh, ethical hacking or pen testing um, OS, but Kali Linux has done a great job in kind of like having everything in one place so you don't have to worry about downloading things and stuff like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and click on download here. It's going to take us to the download page. One of the things that I uh, one of the things that I want you to keep in mind is that there's different variants, different options of um, Kali Linux. So if you want something like the bare metal, which is what we're going to do. Um, so that's what we're going to use. Uh, you have virtual machine. Uh, if you want, you want to run in a virtual environment, you can run this. Uh, you have mobile, you have cloud, you have container like Docker. Uh, I play around with Docker a lot lately. Some things that I'm going to talk about uh, <laughs> too in upcoming videos. I've been playing around a lot. I've been playing around a lot with Docker and trying to understand it. Pretty interesting technology. Pretty, pretty fascinating. So live, but uh, this one I'm going to be using a lot uh, in terms of like you just installing an or an or USB and you can use whatever computer you're using, but you just stick in the USB and say boot from USB and then you, here you go, you have Kali Linux. WSL, I think this is Windows system. Uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. <laughs> this is a subsystem in Windows. I don't know why you you want. I mean, I guess you you can if you run in Windows all the time and you just want to run Linux. You have a, 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 a Windows subsystem for Linux. Interesting. But if you go on Linux, go Linux. Don't go no Windows subsystem for Linux. <laughs> all right. So what we want is the bare metal. This two are recommended if you're doing a virtual machine or anything else. Anything else. So what we want is a bare metal. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. Uh, it's going to take us down here. There's different different type of downloads. You have the weekly. I mean, Kali Linux <laughs> installation process has evolved so much. Like the website even is totally different now. So you have the weekly. So this is um, untested images with untested image with like latest updates and things like that. You don't necessarily want that because uh, things might break. You have the installer. This one is kind of like a uh, little bit of a stable. Uh, can I install? Well, not a little bit. A stable install. When in terms of like Kali Linux itself, this is kind of like the stable one. And then you have all packages if you want to do something like that. So you can download the the download itself from the website here. You can do a torrent, and of course you can do the checksum, which we're going to do later. This is the checksum right here, and I'm going to explain that in a minute. So first thing we're going to click on download. The stuff is going to download here. Now before we 
while, while this is downloading, let's talk a little bit about the checksum. So the checksum, we're going to check that. The reason being that when you download something, especially when it comes to like ethical hacking tools and stuff like that, you always want to you, you want to be in the habit of checking the checksum and make sure it match the checksum on the, the ISO that you downloaded. For those of you guys that know what a checksum is, a checksum is basically like this number that is on the OS itself, the ISO itself. And if any change was to be made on the ISO, a file, a digit, anything that gets added to this ISO that was not originally there when it was created, that was not originally there when it was created, any sort of file whatsoever, it will be different from this checksum. So that, that tells you that, hey, this ISO has been tampered with. Um, I should not use it. I should not create my OS or use this to, to build my Kali Linux OS. So that's something that you need to get in the habit to, especially with um, hacking tools, ethical hacking tools and pen testing tools. Always try to check the checksum. Uh, there's a whole bunch of ways that you can do it. You can do it in a Linux command line. You can do it in like Windows command line. There's a whole bunch of like tools that you can download. Uh, but one of the things that I do here is um, just for just for this video really quick, uh, you can go to this website. I will include this link in the description box below. And then you can choose what uh, hash you're using for this one. If you go back, you see that it's using SHA-256 sum. So you just come to the website and you check SHA-256. And then you just download, you just grab the file from your computer. So we're going to wait till this file is done downloading. We're going to grab it. It's going to go through the file and it's going to output the checksum here. And then we're going to compare that to what Kali Linux have here. It has to match before we use it. If it doesn't match, we know that somebody has tampered with the download and somebody that has tampered with the ISO and it's not something that we should use. Okay, so the download is done. So now what we are going to do is we are going to download the uh, uh, download here. You guys can't see it, so I'm gonna move. <laughs> I'm gonna try to move myself over here a little bit. All right, so there it is. So uh, the download is done here. It's in our download folder. So now we're gonna go to this website. Again, remember that there's a whole bunch of different way that you can check a checksum. I just wanted to make it simple for this video. So that's why I'm going to this website. But you don't necessarily have to use this website. There's a whole bunch of other tools that you can use to check a checksum. So just, just keep that in mind. You don't necessarily have to use this website. So we're gonna go ahead and see um, uh, drop file. We're gonna go ahead and go to downloads and we're gonna grab this file, right? This is the, the Kali Linux file. And then we're gonna go ahead and click open. It's gonna run the, the hash in here. It's gonna run uh, the hash again said, and you're gonna check it and it's gonna give us the, um, uh, the checksum, right? So if we go back now, what we want to do, we just want to copy that. Remember, the goal is to make sure this match, right? We're going to go back. Uh, this is going to take a while to do this thing. Uh, it's at 14%. So we're going to give it some time to finish. And once we come back, it's going to spit out a number, a series of number, and we want to make sure that number match. Okay, guys, so as you can see, it has spit out the number, a series of number. Now we want this number to match. Now you can go ahead and check one at a time if you want to, <laughs> if you if you fancy that. But what I'm going to do is uh, on Mac, you do Control F. On Windows, you can do, I mean, on Mac, you can do Command F. On Windows, you can do Control F. And this little box will come up here. You just want to paste that number in there. And as you can see, it matches exactly this number. So that's what we're looking for. But again, you can go through it and make sure it matches everything. But you can see it matches exactly this number. And that's what we want. We know that the file is legitimate. We know that the file has not been tampered with. Um, so you should be good. You should be good to go to upload this to your Proxmox server. So that takes us to the other part, which is going to our Proxmox server. You're going to go to your Proxmox server here. Um, for those of you guys that don't have a Proxmox server, I will link somewhere up here that you guys can see how I set up my Proxmox server. This is what I'm using here. Um, as you can see, I have different different um, stuff right now. I actually do have Kali Linux OS that I installed a while back, but it's not on. I have uh, this Windows that I use for CCNA and stuff like that. I have a, a Docker. Oh, Docker, <laughs> however you say it. I have an accent, so. <laughs> yeah, I've been playing around a lot with Docker to kind of understand it. I went uh, walk domain. This is something that I'm playing around with, um, building a domain and things like that. But these are the VMs that I have in here right now. Plan to grow, plan to build a lot more. Uh, but Docker is pretty interesting. That's the one I've been playing around with a lot. Anyways, that's beside the point. So what we want to do is we want to go to local, right? This is our, our, our local storage. So what we want to do, we want to click on upload. And what we want to do is we want to select and it's going to take us to our download file. 
and we're going to click on this download file. So basically what we're doing right here is we are uploading the, the ISO that we downloaded. We'll check the checksum. We'll upload it to Proxmox so we can use it to create a VM. Let me do that one more time. So I'm going to click cancel. I'm going to click cancel. You in uh, Proxmox now, you're going to go to local. You're going to go to, it's going to bring you here. You're going to go to content. You're going to go to upload. You're going to go to ISO, right? Um, because it's not a container. And then you're going to go to select. And then you're going to go to the folder where you download your Kali Linux. Click, click on the Kali Linux, click open. And then you just click on upload. It's going to go through the process of uploading the files. We're going to let it do its thing. And we're going to come back and pick up. Upload is finished. So as you can see, we now have the Kali Linux ISO right here. It's about 4.24 gigs. Uh, so we're good to go. Now we should be able to see it when we are installing or when we're trying to install uh, Kali Linux. We should be able to see this ISO and we should be able to choose and we should be able to select it and then go through our installation process. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a VM. Now there's two ways, a couple, way, couple, of, couple of ways to create a VM in um, Proxmox. You can right click, you can click on your node, right click on your node and click create a VM. Um, or you can go through the process of, let me do this. You can go through the process of coming, just go back. You can go through the process of coming up here and then click on create a VM, whichever way you want to do it. So right here, click on create a VM and it's going to take you through the process of creating a VM. So now we're going to go through the process of creating the VM, which is part two of this video. So we're going to go through the process of creating the VM. And then after that, we're going to do the installation. So to create the VM, you want to select the node that you want to use. I only have one node here, so I just select that. Uh, this is internal number. So that means that this is the number that um, Proxmox used to kind of label your VM. So you can keep things organized. So 100, 101, 102, 103, 104. If you were to delete 103, it will repopulate 103 again. Uh, I deleted 100, so it went back to 100. You can put numbers on this if you want, but I say just keep it that way. And then the name, you can call it whatever you want. So we can say, uh, we want to call it something. Let's think of something fun. Let's just call it my name, All right? Uh, let's just call it my name. And then once you do that, this is the name to help you recognize it here, right? So here, it would appear here. We'll have the number, and then it will have the name of the VM. You can call it whatever you want, right? And then we're going to go to OS. Um, you don't have to select anything else here. You don't have to do anything else here. You can go to OS. For OS, you can see that it's selecting the local, right? This is where we upload our Kali Linux. So we should be able to see our Kali Linux ISO, which is right here. That's perfect. That's what we want. We click on that. Now we have our Kali Linux ISO attached to this um, to this um, VM. Now we can choose to use no VM. We can choose to use C, um, CD or DVD. It can pass through. Uh, something to think about. I'm not going to talk about it in this video, but maybe I'll make a video um, on another day. Um, you can use that. You can just choose Linux because uh, that's what we're using, Linux OS. You can choose the kernel here. I'll go to system. For system, you don't really have to do anything. You can choose different graphics card if you want. You can do whatever you want here, but you don't necessarily have to. I'm not going to do anything. You just go to the next part, which is hard drive. For hard drive, you can select the type of hard drive that you want to use. I'm going to leave it as default. You can tell it what storage you want to use. This is my storage pool. Um, you can just select on that, right? And then you tell it what big you want the, the hard drive to be. So in my case, I'm just going to say 100, 100, <laughs> right? And then you can leave this as default. You can play around with this if you want on uh, a cache, but I'm just going to leave it as default. Go to CPU. You can use as much core here as you want. So if your hypervisor, whatever it is that you're using, have a lot more core, you can use all of it if you want. Uh, you can lose some of it if you want. Uh, you can always change it as well. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, well, if you choose eight here, it's always going to be eight forever. If you choose 10 years, it's always going to be 10 forever. That's not, that's not the case. You can change it when you want. That's the beauty of having a VM. So we're just going to put eight. And then for memory, uh, it's giving me two um, uh, GB right now. I'm going to keep it at that. All right. You don't necessarily need a lot. Uh, you can add as much memory as you want here, but I don't necessarily need a lot. This is just for demonstration. Uh, network, you can say, hey, I don't want this to have a network device. I don't want this to have a network device like a NIC card or anything like that. I don't want it to be attached to any network. Just install the OS. That's it. Uh, you can choose um, whatever bridge you have here. I only have one. Uh, VLAN, you can do VLAN, VLAN tagging. If you have VLAN set up on your network, I don't. 
Uh, and then the model here, you can choose different Nick model if you want to. But again, I'm just going to leave everything as default. You can play around with this as much as you want, if you want to. And then just go to confirm. Confirm is going to tell you that these are all the settings that you do have, right? These are all your settings. If you want to make changes, you can always make changes if you want to double click on it. Right, double click on it doesn't do anything, but you can go back to like hard drive, CPU, memory, and then change as much as you want before you click on finish. Right. You can um, click on start after created um, and then after it's created, it's going to automatically start. So you don't have to go back and click start, but that's fine. We want to click start because I want to show you guys something else before we get started. Um, advanced, you can go to advanced, but you don't really need to do anything like that. So we'll just click on finish here and that's done. So if you see our uh, Windows VM has been created, it's right here. It says 100. All right. Uh, and in a couple of seconds there you go it's gonna have the name that we gave it which is uh let me which is my name i'll go to uh we're gonna talk about a couple of things here for you to be familiar with right so you have summary um you have the summary of the vm itself remember any vm that you click on it's going to give you the summary of that vm so you have the summary you have the console the console shows you when the machine is put up Hardware, you have all of the hardware, you can make changes to it here. So if you double click on here, you can change the, mem uh, the memory, you can change the CPU if you want here, you can play with the BIOS here if you want to uh, display. So you can make a whole bunch of changes here and you can increase memory, increase hard drive as the use case of your VM grow. Uh, you don't necessarily have to, but you can if you want to. Uh, that's the flexibility again of having uh, a VM. So once that's done, there's other settings here that you can play around with. Um, snapshot, for example, you can take a snapshot of the of the VM. Snapshot are very useful if you're making a change or you run in uh, updates. It's always good to do um, um, snapshot so you can revert back if something happened. And you have a whole bunch of other settings, firewall and permissions and things like that. So once we are 100% satisfied with our satisfied with our um, VM and we've checked the hardware and make sure it is exactly the way that we want to. We're just going to go ahead and click start. And then we're going to go to console. You're going to see that the VM has started. This takes us to part three. We're going to go through the whole installation process and then walk through it step by step. But before we do that, I'm going to click here. I'm going to make this full screen. All right. So it's take over the whole screen so you don't see any more proxmox. So what we want to do here is um, we want to install it so now you can choose different different set of installation that you want but we want to do graphical installation you can choose kind of like the default non-graphical installation if you want to but we want to just do graphical installation so we're going to go ahead and click enter <clears throat> take a couple of seconds once you click enter for it to go through things so once you click enter it's going to take a couple of seconds and then it's going to go to the next part it's going to start loading the whole process of going through installation so in this part we're going to go through the whole installation and install it and then you know have it up and running. So it's asking us for a language. We're gonna go ahead and choose English, click continue. United States, you're gonna click continue. American English, we're gonna click continue. Uh, it's gonna load. All right, this is the first part. It does take a, it does take some time to go through the whole installation process. So just keep that in mind. I uh, might want to kind of spare maybe like 20, 30 minutes to go through the whole installation. It's gonna install a couple of files and it's gonna ask us a couple of questions. All right, let me go through this thing. Uh, this is a good time to say, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the like button if you like the video. <laughs> and subscribe if you want to see awesome videos like this all the time. Okay, it's going to ask us for a host name. Uh, we can call this whatever we want. A host name is whatever is, is the name that appears on your network. So if you are on another computer, this is the name that you're going to see and say, hey, this is... Um, my Linux computer. So I'm just going to maybe add that in there, I guess. So you can call it whatever you want. There's a name for you to recognize this machine on your network, right? So you can call it whatever you want. Let's click continue. It's going to ask us for domain name. I don't have a domain set up on my, uh, <laughs> in my home network, but if you do, you can put that information in here. Click on continue. Full name, you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it test. Uh, my name again. All right, you're gonna know my name by the end of this <laughs> by the end of this tutorial. <laughs> All right, so you can call it whatever you want, and then let's click on continue. Uh, this is just the name, um, the account name, the first and last name of the account name that it's gonna be created on the 
on the, on Cal Linux on the OS. So you click continue. Uh, it's going to say select the username for the new account. Uh, it normally uses your first name, so you can call it just test. That's fine. Click continue. Password. This is very very important. Obviously, I'm doing a demonstration here, so I can put whatever I want because I'm, when I'm done, I'm going to delete this. No probably most going to delete this uh, on this VM. So password, you can choose whatever you want. If you don't want to, you can click continue, but it's very, very important, especially with hacking tools. Make sure your password is very secure. Make sure your password is very, very secure. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, my password, my super secure password, it's going to be password one, two, three. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how many people use password one, two, three. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to put password one, two, three. All right, and then we're going to go continue. All right, it's going to ask you to select your time zone. Um, I'm just going to paste on time and then click continue. Right, it's going to go through the process of installing more files, doing more stuff. We're going to let it do that um, oh. <laughs> and then come back when it's ready. It's ready. All right, go ahead and click use the entire disk because, again, we're using a VM and we set um, the VM size, the disk size on the hardware part of things when we create the VM initially. So we wanted to use the entire disk. So we're going to go ahead and click and use entire disk and click on continue. It's going to select the disk that we have created. This is this that we created and told it to use. So we're going to click continue, right? It's going to say all files in one partition. That's fine. You can separate it if you want. Um, uh, if you have a reason to do separation, you can do that, but I'm just going to say all files in one partition and click continue. It's basically telling you here that, hey, this is what you're installing right now. Are you fine with that? Do you want to continue? Um, if you do, it's not going to be changed, that kind of thing. It's giving you the same one in here. Hey, if you have dual boot and things like that, you choose to install it on your whole partition. Do you want to do that? You just want to click yes and click continue. Uh, it's going to go through the process of installing it on that drive. Uh, this part actually takes a while. <laughs> and we're going to let it do its thing, and we're going to come back when it's, uh, it's done. So the first part is done. The first installation part is done. So this part is basically telling us that, hey, do you want to install a little bit more feature than, uh, comes, uh, than the default feature? Um, I like choosing this part right here. Just know that if you install the more stuff you install, the more space it takes. So, uh, and uh, but I like it not to go back and say, hey, I need this tool and it's not there. So it tells you, hey, default selection plus additional tools. That's fine with me. And also I like using the KD Plasma. I, well, I don't like using it, but I like using it, having the options. So basically what these are, is a different desktop environment. Linux is a beautiful thing that allows you to have different desktop environment. And I'll show you guys that too once we log in, once everything is installed. So with Windows, you have this one desktop environment and you, you like it. You don't like it, that's your problem. Windows don't care. I mean, Microsoft don't care, <laughs> right? But with um, Linux, if you don't like a desktop environment, you can change it. And they have so many, so much desktop environments, like it's a lot of them. So this allows you to install uh, the genome and then it allows you to install the KD uh, Plasma. I will kind of kind of show you guys how to switch between desktop environments once we're done. So you have different, different desktop environment. Once you select that, and again, you don't have to, but once you do, you can click continue. Okay, so this part is asking you what display manager you want to use. You can choose between the three. Um, you have a set of three installed, so it's asking you which one do you want to use for default. Uh, you can just click the first one uh, and then just click on continue. Again, if you want to choose a different one here, you can. Uh, just make sure you read up on them before you do that. Uh, but you can just choose the first one and just click on continue. And it's going to go through the process of installing a couple more files. I'll let those thing and we're gonna come back. Okay, guys, so the installation process is almost done. That took a while. And this is why I say that if you are going to set up Kali Linux or any other Linux or any other OS, just kind of spare about 30 minutes to one hour. Uh, we're at the part right now where it's telling us that, hey, the Grub, the Grub um, bootload is gonna be installed. Uh, and it's telling us that, hey, if you have any other operating system there, it might be temporarily unbootable. So that's something to keep in mind. A little bit of story or a little bit of explanation of what the Grub bootloader is. So when you set up the computer, you have the BIOS, it does the checking of the hardware and checking of a whole bunch of other stuff uh, to make sure everything is working correctly before handing that over to the, uh, 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 the Grub bootloader. So the Grub bootloader basically kind of display all of your it's kind of like this graphical interface they kind of display all of your kernels so if you have 
when you install your your Linux operating system, you install it with a specific kernel. But every time you upgrade it, you have another kernel that's uh, installed there. So you can go back and say, hey, I want to go back to the original kernel. I want to use that original kernel. The grab bootloader display that in the graphical interface for you when initially boot the computer. It allows you to choose between those kernel. But also if you have another OS installed on the computer as well or installed on the same computer that you have your Linux installed, the Grub bootloader will allow you to see that and be able to kind of have dual boot. So it allows you to choose between that and say, hey, um, I want to go and use my Windows um, OS instead of the Linux OS. So basically, this is what it's telling you that, hey, if you were installing this, if you have something else installed in here, just keep that in mind. It might make it unbootable. So that's basically the whole concept. Here. We don't. So we're going to click. Uh, yes, that's fine. You say install, but um, <laughs> the grub would load it to your primary drive. So that's fine because we don't have any other OS installed. So that's something to keep in mind. Click on continue. We say entire device manually. We click on continue. Um, and then you can... Uh, go back, <laughs> you don't want to install group bootloader uh, to your primary device. Uh, you want to click yes, you want to click on continue, uh, and then you don't want to enter in manually. You want to select your, your primary data. That's what I didn't do the first time. So this is good. This is why I like doing this kind of videos because you see where a mistake is made and say, oh, I didn't do it right, but no cut in here. We're going to include that in there. <laughs> so yeah, so you go back and then select your drive and then you just click on continue. And it's going to go through the rest of the installation process and it's going to ask us to reboot the, the the computer once everything is done so let's let it let's let it do its thing and once it's done we're going to go ahead and reboot the computer and we'll get to see the beautiful login interface and we'll get to log in for the first time okay it is finally done we're done with the installation woohoo <laughs> so now we can go ahead and restart the computer and um, get to see the beautiful login interface so let's go ahead and say continue and it's going to reboot it it's going to go through the process of rebooting it and it's going to take us beautiful prox marks <laughs> it's going to take us through the login interface uh here you just click okay and it's saying welcome to grub and it's going to take us to the login interface the beautiful login Cal Linux. so this is the Cal Linux interface this is our Cal Linux login user that we created uh, one of the things that i do want to show you guys if i click on that remember when i told you that the beautiful thing about um uh, Linux in general is that you can choose different different desktop environments. So we did install several desktop environments. So we can choose between them and say we want to use this or we want to use that and we want to use that. So if you don't like one, you don't necessarily. Let me move this because I think you guys are not able to see that. Let me move myself over here again, <laughs> over here. Uh, and then you can choose between different interface. So I mean desktop um, interface here. So you can choose. Whatever you fancy, you can check each and every one of them. And then there's a lot more that you can install. So if you don't even like this one, so you can check some other ones and see how you can install it on your um, OS. So we're going to go ahead and just click, you know, that's fine. And then just click login. Uh, super secure password, <laughs> which is password one, two, three. And then we're going to go ahead and click enter. And it's going to log us in. And this is our first time logging in. And if everything works correctly, we are going to, I'm going to move myself to the middle <laughs> again so we can see everything. So we're going to move ourselves to the middle. So this is the beautiful, this is the also beautiful Cal Linux. Again, if you don't like this interface, there's a whole bunch of interface that you can use. So you don't necessarily have to use this, but this is the beautiful um, Cal Linux here. Uh, it's based off of Debian um, and it has all the tools that you need for ethical hacking. So that's why it's such a powerful tool, right? So this is basically how you install Cal Linux on a Proxmox VM. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you have enjoyed the video, that will help me out a lot. It will help this video out. It will help more people to see it, but it also help the channel grow. If you do like my content and you want to see more content like this every single week, because I do come out with content every week, I come out with content about uh, the certificates that I've passed and the ones that I'm going to take, uh, review coming soon, a lot of like, things that I do, a lot of things that I buy to play around with, I'm going to review them. So if you do like things like that, and of course, if you do like seeing someone failing, someone struggling, someone talking about the hard part about IT, not just the easy part, the, the struggle to get the certificate and everything else, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you turn on your notifications so you get notified every time I come out with something awesome. Again, thank you guys for watching. As always, do not forget to stay geeking. I will see you guys next week. Peace.